Okay, so my computer has shut down just for a few minutes. You'll just give me a few seconds to do the presentation. But uh, in the meantime, we can just start a discussion on what we are going to cover. So if you have gone uh, through what you're supposed to do today, you're supposed to do dashboard uh, development. And they want to take us through a detailed understanding of uh, the design thinking. So just uh, to engage you guys, I need to know how many of you have created dashboards before. We did dashboards in week zero, but I want to know how many were able to create, so maybe deploy. Anyone? Anyone who has created a dashboard? <laughs> Yes, Nicole, were you able to deploy your dashboard or did you just do it uh, locally? Yeah, I just deployed it. I use a Streamlit Cloud to deploy the dashboard. And did you use any platform like Heroku to host your Streamlit no. application? No, so I didn't. You Since did uh, Streamlit Cloud worked for me, I didn't go for Heroku or Netlify. Just <laughs> Streamlit also. The cloud worked for me. Okay, that's nice to hear. Anyone else who was able to create a dashboard in uh, week zero? And if they were able to deploy it? <coughs> Anyone else? Yes, Margaret, is that about uh, is that about dashboard? I just seen a message. Margaret. Um sorry, no, I was just testing um the whiteboard thing. I was looking for a place to write notes. So what have you been able to do with the whiteboard so far? Um Nothing really. It was just like the first time clicking it, and so yeah. Okay, so what I'll take you guys through is uh, when creating dashboards, how we should um, design it in a way that uh, our users can uh, understand. So when we do when we do this uh, machine learning machine learning projects, you'd notice that uh, we are the developers, we understand the code, but uh, most of the time you'll be communicating with a business team that does not understand the code, and uh, the dashboard uh, will help you communicate your findings. So this class will mainly be about uh, how do we design so that uh, we have a, a nice interaction with the user. So Oh, Birok, I see that uh, you uh, you tried, but you did not you did not deploy. You did not deploy. Okay, so we'll try to make sure that most of us deploy deploy <coughs> our models this week. This week we and well, last week we just uh, deployed. I think it was better, but this week we'll be doing it um, to deploy our models as well in a way that our live users can actually just do an input, then their inputs can go through our model, and then I'll give them an output to do a project. So from yesterday's class, we, had, uh, we did modeling from yesterday's class, and uh, where I'll be starting from today, I will be assuming that we already have a model, a trained model, and um, it has already been pickled. So I will be starting from there. Has anyone reached there so far? Does anyone have a model already? Anyone? Okay, so just a minute, let me join with my, my laptop as well.
So before I start, so that you don't just leave the line uh, quiet, does anyone have any question that they would like us to tackle through this class? Any question you've been wondering about dashboards, about, uh, I think, Streamlit? Maybe we'll cover a little bit of Streamlit. Anyone who has any question that can guide us, that we'll actually consider through this, through this class? Okay, so I see there is a question. Uh, Abel is asking what is the difference between Streamlit and uh, Heroku? Anyone who can answer Abel before I give my answer? The yeah. difference between Streamlit and Heroku? Yes, yeah. Michael? Maybe let me try. Yeah. I just don't know that much about Streamlit, but... Uh, yeah. Heroku is like a a platform that that will enable us to uh, deploy our projects like like github also has a functionality like that heroku will more or less give us a place to deploy our project uh, whereas streamlit also give give us a a platform to deploy our project it has a streamlit cloud also but i think streamlit is more or less related to machine learning Parts, but I don't think Heroku has that functionalities. Maybe I have that little knowledge about it. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Martin, you want to add something? Yeah, uh, Streamlit, just as they have, men as they have mentioned, uh, it's a machine learning cloud, but uh, the Heroku is a cloud that uh, you just work on it actually it's like a platform as a service paas a platform as a service that means like uh, when you use it uh, you don't have to do a lot of uh, setup uh, when it comes to getting into the servers but uh, that means you, you don't have to work on it like the way you work on infrastructure but uh, stream cloud is different in the sense that it's also a PAS, but that is a platform as a service, but it's uh, inclined towards machine learning. And it will offer you also a machine learning, uh, the machine learning library for developing the dashboard, uh, showing the user analytics and yeah. Okay, so Abel, I hope you've had an idea. So basically, Heroku is mainly used as a, it's a, it's like a, the a production environment. That's what uh, Heroku is mainly. You can uh, deploy a Streamlit app, you can deploy a Flask app, and uh, I think there are other apps you can also deploy in Heroku. So Heroku is just mainly a production environment. And I think uh, Stream Cloud offers the same, but now Streamlit, Streamlit uh, focuses more on um, creating the the dashboard, the interactivity for machine, for models, and uh, it's me as Martin has said, it is used mainly in um, in machine learning. So I think the main difference is that Heroku does not allow you to do those other things. It's basically just a production environment, while Streamlit now allows you to actually interact with your data. Is that clear? Was it Abel? Okay. Any other questions before I continue? I see my machine is finally up. Any other question before I start? Okay. 
Okay, so the purpose of dashboard on this analysis. So mainly the purpose of a dashboard is communication or when you go through the business understanding of this week's uh, challenge, you are supposed to communicate. I think uh, you are supposed to advise a team whether they should buy this telecommunication company or not. So from your findings of uh, after doing the analysis, uh, in a dashboard, you just basically prepare your findings. Yeah, maybe you have a team of directors and you want to tell them you're going to buy this company or not. So you just have uh, findings are prepared in the dashboard. And as well, since we will also be doing modeling, you can also add your model, your model in the dashboard. And uh, you can just maybe show them like uh, with, the, with the examples. After you've trained your model, now you just show them with these specific inputs, you can predict this kind of output. It's basically just um, a presentation to your company. Is that clear, Margaret? Is it Margaret? Okay, so I just need to start the presentation. I hope you can see my screen. I can see my screen. I hope all of you can see my screen. Yeah, you can see your screen. <laughs> so, as I've already introduced, we will be doing dashboard development uh, using Streamlit, but we won't be focusing more on the Streamlit part of uh, this. Uh, tutorial but more on the design how do we make it how do we design it so that it uh, achieves what we want so that's which the data you're talking about the one that was shared on monday today so you're talking about that data if it is that data, just uh, you have access to that data, just ensure you're using the right. Oh, sorry, sorry, sure. Okay, so in this uh, tutorial, we will be looking at uh, what design thinking, what is design thinking, the design process, uh, how we do our design of the data balls for the user. There are few things we can uh, consider to make our design uh, visually appealing. And then uh, just uh, for this tutorial, I'll go a little bit over the dashboard development using Streamlit. And then uh, dockerization was touched on last week, so I'll just uh, pass by why we need to dockerize our environment, why, how, why, and how we do packaging, and then finally deployment. So most of our concentration will be in the first uh, three topics on the design. Okay. So uh, design thinking. Uh, design thinking, it is a design methodology that provides a solution-based approach to solving problems. So what uh, we are going to, we, are, we mean by uh, this methodology is uh, we, we know that we have this, this challenge. We, we are trying to sell a telecommunication company to someone. So what, uh, maybe these directors, let's assume we are selling to these directors, uh, what is it that they want? How are we going to approach and uh, approach this challenge? And then uh, eventually, how are we going to present our insights and our findings to them so that uh, they can understand in an easily understandable manner? So there are mainly five stages in uh, this design thinking process. We have uh, empathize, we have define, we have ideate, prototype, and test. So empathize in the, in the real world is mainly just uh, interacting with humans, observing how, what is it, uh, why do they want us to do this project? What exactly is it that they would like to achieve from this project? So in our case, like uh, this week, so this is mainly understanding uh, the first section, business understanding, what is needed from me. This is what uh, we can do in this stage. And then we have uh, defining the problem. 
So, for example, after we've been given all the data we had, I mean, it's a huge data. I'll just, I hope everyone has actually got to understand the data so far. We've all done task one. We did submission of that yesterday. So I just assume everyone has done task one. Everyone has understood what the data looks like. So defining the problem is, um, for example, um, defining the problem. Mm -hmm. So how can I say? For example, we want to know, how can I define the data for the sick? The problem, we want to know if this telecommunication company is performing well, is it worth buying or uh, is, it, uh, will it, is it just a loss? Uh, that's what uh, we want to define uh, this week. Then uh, on the ideating, ideating step, we just come up with ideas uh, from what the from what the the directors want. How can we solve their problem? So let me just go through the the challenge and go through that un understanding uh, page. I think that will be better so that we can go through this together. Okay. Okay, so you notice from the first paragraph that uh, we are trying, I was saying directors, I'm sorry for that, we are trying to actually make these investors, uh, we are giving them a detailed analysis of the data that underlies this telecommunication business so that they can uh, understand the fundamentals of the business and especially identify opportunities to drive profitability by changing the focus of which products or services are being offered. So this is our main goal for this week. We just want them to... Okay, what makes a uh, telecommunication uh, profitable? I think from the variables we were given, we have uh, variables like the handset. We have things like handsets, manufacturers, mm, uh, how the number of Okay, let me just ask uh, you, I think I'll throw this question back to you guys, because uh, you've, I think you may understand this data better than me, you've gone through the data in, um, in task one, and uh, apart from, apart from the number of clients, what else do you think makes this company profitable? I think uh, you might get this more from the data that you explored. Can I have anyone uh, who has an idea? Maybe something that is uh, that makes the company profitable apart from the number of clients. Anyone? Desmond, I know Desmond, you are on the call. Could you help uh, with this? I think uh, I might not have the best answer there. Desmond, uh, could you help with this? Okay, thank you. So, um, Margaret, I think uh, I think it's Margaret who asked the question. It's important to understand that uh, there are other things that come into account, like the when you're doing um, the engagement analysis. Are you able to engage your customers? Also, when you're doing um, the satisfaction analysis of the customers, are they really satisfied with uh, the, the the services that are being offered? So, when when you when you go through, you will get to understand there are things like gaming that is there with this company. There is YouTube. This um, uh, there is also uh, go emails, Gmail. Uh, yeah, and things like that. So it's important to understand uh, the given data set. It's not just the number of customers, but are you able to satisfy those customers? The engagement analysis, are you able to engage them? Uh, are they really satisfied? Uh, are they able to be retained 
in this company and things like that. Okay, so what I am uh, getting from Desmond is that basically what uh, the way our objectives were divided into four sub objectives here, the user overview analysis, engagement analysis and experience analysis. When you conduct these four analyses, um, you get to understand how is the data, how are we engaging our clients, what is their experience and uh, how is their satisfaction rate. So by getting to understand uh, these four sub-objectives, this for will uh, also help in understanding if the company is profitable. Does that answer your question, Margaret? Okay. Okay, so we were saying uh, to come up uh, with ideas on how we can actually, now how are we going to do, how are we going to show uh, our investors that this company actually engages its customers. How are we going to show our investors that this company, uh, what do I say, that this company, the overview analysis, satisfaction analysis, so ideas on how we can do it. We can do, for example, the user overview analysis using tab, tab, uh, tabular formats, maybe just showing comparisons. We can do maybe engagement analysis by using uh, heat maps. Then you, you come up with uh, uh, ideas on how you can actually create this dashboard for them to understand. Next, what we do is a prototype. We create a prototype. We come up. Uh, we now, after we say maybe we are going the best way to show user overview analysis is using a tabular format. And uh, maybe the best way to show satisfaction, maybe we will do a model prediction and then show, yeah, this is the best way to show. Maybe the best way to do user satisfaction, the other analysis we have was the engagement analysis, maybe is through this and uh, this graph. So we create those prototypes of what we think uh, we'll do our work, then we do a test. So test, uh, in this case, in you may yeah. so in this case when we do a test in the real environment you just go get the results back to the users back to the investors and uh you test it with them so is this does this make sense do we have uh, the amount of engagement that we want so i want to, uh, to show you a, a design uh, process in detail so we have this one, two, three, four, five stages in design thinking. But instead of thinking it of a linear, a linear process, I want to think it's not non-linear. Some might be iterative because we may find ourselves going back to, to our data to understand the goals. So as you said, you empathize, you define, you ideate, then I create the prototype and test it in the environment. So here between uh, emphasis and defining, after you you, when you get to understand how they, what the users want, you might find that uh, you understand these coders. Maybe overview, you just want to know the number of clients, but then the users want to know it another way. So every time you engage with a user, it will help you define your problem a little bit better. Anytime you create a prototype, you might actually learn, sorry, you might actually learn that, oh, there's a mistake. I went and I did user engagement analysis and uh, this does not look nice. So you go back and uh, do another idea. So this is actually where, like the workbook, the workbook that has been shared in the design, this is what can help you now come up with uh, your concept, concept ideas for your dashboard. When you do testing, you know, when you do testing and you uh, engage with the user, <coughs> you can get more ideas on how to on how to improve your model. So basically that's how the design process works. It is not iterate, it is not uh, sequential. You might you might keep updating your um, your model so that you can actually achieve what the user wants. So we bearing this in mind how you're supposed to do a design, a dashboard design. 
the next thing you're supposed to know is uh, that this design we're doing it for the user what will make our, our design uh, better for the user so a user-based design we are not doing this for us you can notice that sometimes you actually create a dashboard and it works for you but then you share with someone else and they don't understand where should i start and uh, that's why we're actually implementing this process of uh, designing where you actually have empathize where you involve the user a lot and we also have test where you also involve the user and go around to the user satisfaction is uh, achieved so in designing it for the user, there are a few things that you just need uh, to note. Like, uh, for example, you need to show your user how your dashboard, how your dashboard works. A uh, few of the way you can, like I've just said, you can create a dashboard that you understand, but not everyone will understand, especially when you do deployment and it is accessible to the world. Not everybody will just understand what you are trying to achieve. So an easier way to do that, you can actually add just an explainer text to your, to your dashboard. Or uh, you add, uh, you embed a screencast. So for example, let me show you. I think I have one stream up here. One stream Okay, so before before this loads, I'm sorry for the before this loads, what I wanted to show you is uh, embedding a screencast. What I mean by a screencast is, uh, for example, if your dashboard goes from you have to click this, do this, do this. It's a sequential uh, over. For example, if you want to show someone how to access docs and how to create a presentation and you might tell them, this is where you actually do a new slide. This is uh, how you navigate to the next slide. This is where you do a slideshow. So you actually do the process yourself. You go do add a slide, do this. This is where you add a text box and then you record that into a video then you can embed it somewhere on your Streamlit app. Maybe at the beginning, maybe at another page, you can make it your introduction page on just a navigation to your application. So, let me see. If it's So another way to make, uh, while well, designing for this or something else you need to consider is to have examples of input data. So for example, today I was going through an app I deployed two years ago and uh, I don't even understand <laughs> what was supposed to be the input because uh, you don't know the range, you don't know. Okay, so maybe an input just says, uh, enter the number of sessions. So should this be just a number one? Should it be like 50,000? So when you actually explain on your data, this is maybe the input range, or uh, maybe you show a default input data that can be used to just run um, your system. So something else you can do is uh, show information only when it is needed. I, I wish I had my app open. <laughs> okay, so I just want uh, to show you this part of visually designing not visually designing our application for the user in a way that they can easily understand. 
So an easier way of making uh, users understand is maybe by creating tool tips and expanders. For example, a tool tip is uh, when you see questions, some, some inputs usually have this question mark at the end, and this question mark shows you what that field needs exactly. So this, this information is just extra information. When somebody already knows what is needed in that uh, inbox, in that input, they won't need it, but... Uh, Okay, Margaret, I think uh, this the analysis we are doing today is just uh, our company. We're just uh, analyzing the company of one data. The data, the data of one company. Okay, so we have this example streamlit up. I have, uh, I have just hosted it locally. And I was trying to tell you, let me just go directly to the model. Okay, so as I was saying, Yeah, exactly. This is what's the tool, tool tip I was trying to show you. You can always add such uh, helpers to your application, like uh, this to just show what does this field need, what is the range of this field, just add them. It is just an extra information that will actually make your application easier, easier to use. What we're just trying to do is make the application easier for the, for the user to use. So apart from just designing it in a way that is easier, you can consider these three pointers I've just gone through. Something else is uh, to make it uh, actually visually appealing to the users. And uh, this is uh, one of the ways you can do is like maybe laying it out in columns. For, if you can see from my application, let me keep shifting. If you can see from my application, most of my data has actually just spanned the entire the entire column. I have used a wide uh, wide column, so everything is spanning the entire the entire document. But uh, for example, if you look at this user overview analysis, you'd see that I've only utilized one column, and uh, this might not be as attractive. If there is actually more space on this other side, you can actually use in streamlets. You can uh, use columns and uh, have uh, maybe you have top 10 hands here, you have top three hands manufacturers on this side. Just uh, make sure you use columns, not just doing it, doing everything on one on one column. You can use multiple columns. Another thing you'd notice in, um, in streamlets is that you can do vertical columns or uh, horizontal columns. So, for example, if you want data, if the first data is uh, dependent, no flows to the second data in a way that maybe this data is dependent on this, you can actually use a vertical flow kind of manner. And if you want it in a horizontal manner, maybe the data flows from here to here, you can also display that in a horizontal manner just to make it look appealing. So I think I'll just open uh, the document here that explains it real nicely. I've attached it. I'll, I think I'll send this to you later. But there's a document here. Mm. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Okay, so for, for example, what I was saying about, about the columns. So you can see here, instead of just using, uh, I don't know if this can fully expand, if you can see, so. Okay, so if you can see this example of app, what we have done in our, in my example, we only have it in one, in one column. But uh, instead of wasting the other white spaces, you can actually use uh, multiple columns to display your data. This is visually more visually appealing than uh, what I had. And in Streamlit, you can just easily achieve this by using uh, the... 
yeah, using this CU page configured to layout.wide. So I will share a link to this page. Actually, no, this one has been shared in the document. This one is the, one of the documents that we have shared. And that is an easy way of showing it. So what I was saying about the horizontal flow, if the data, when you look at this specific uh, dashboard, you can easily tell that data flows from left to right because uh, that's where our eyes are being guided. You can see that the, this is clearly a horizontal kind of um, arrangement. When you see maybe data flows from up to bottom here, we have a vertical example where whatever happens below is dependent on whatever happens up, up here. So in this such a case, you can use a vertical flow. It's just easier for the user to follow in such cases. So this, this document gives you even the, the command to use to achieve search, so you no need to worry. And uh, the other thing you can use to make your design visually appealing, uh, appealing sorry, is considering the themes and colors and uh, the contrast ratio. So Streamlit also gives you different themes that you can consider. We have maybe like a green theme, like a blue theme, a dark theme. So don't, uh, anytime you use, uh, when you go through, through this document to give you a more detailed uh, understanding of why we use different colors. Uh, so it just helps in understanding. Like for example, if you, if you look, If you look at the app uh, that we have here, you can see that our sidebar is definitely in a darker color than our main main side content. So this is just a, basically a small contrast that has been used between the sidebar and the page side content. So you can make it, you can actually use more colors maybe to show if this data is different, we have here the overall handset manufacturer type data. Maybe if you have another data, also added down here, you can just maybe visually separate them in uh, different things in colors. The other thing we can use uh, is um, using text sizing. Like for example, since this is the heading of uh, whatever is happening down here, just ensure that you are the ones that need more emphasis, like this is a heading, you do it in maybe a streamlit of title. It is less important, maybe a stream with don't start either. Just make sure you use uh, all the features they have in Streamlit to make your work appear more nice. You can actually tell that this is a higher header than this, and this is higher than this. So whatever is happening under here, they're all under the overall handset manufacturers. So that is just an example of making your app visually appealing. Oh, then finally, you can add badges, logos, and emojis. So I think Streamlit just gives you, you can find like a cheat sheet of the emojis that Streamlit allows. Maybe I think you, there's this way of just embedding an image in Streamlit. <laughs> Oh, yeah, just using the st.image function in Streamlit and you can add your logo like that. Here we have an example. So up to that so far, are there any questions on how to make your dashboard interactive with your user? Before I continue. <laughs> Yes, yes, Tadesa. Hello. Anastasia. Yes. yes. Can, you, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for uh, your nice presentation. Uh, what I'm going to ask is just uh, for example, you have shown us the dashboard which is built from that analysis. Uh, telecom data analysis, but uh, what I need to <clears throat> have as information is uh, on the week zero we have uh, <clears throat> we have uh, built the dashboard, but uh, not in this manner. But what I need is 
are we going to add the titles, captions, uh, logos, and so on things from the streamlit after uh, producing or just after uh, displaying our data on the dashboard? For example, what we're going to do is using Py, using Python, we we may write the data cleaning, analyzing, and uh, the <coughs> analysis of each four tasks here. Then after that, you can we can access it from Streamlight light dashboard side. Then at that time, could we add the headers on the Py, Py, uh, Python code or on the Streamlight? Hello? I think there's a problem with her connection. Um, Alessia, I, I did not hear your question. Can you just come up again, please? Okay, this moment. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, my question is just, uh, we write the analysis part. We analyze the data, such as user engagement, user behavior, uh, and another from all the tasks, task one to four, then we will save it on, for example, on the Python code. Then after we will uh, present it on a streamlit. So to uh, make a good feel of our dashboard, where we add uh, the things like uh, titles, captions, images, emojis and so on thing. Is it on Streamlit dashboard or is it in my Python code? That's my question. Maybe I am novice at it. Sorry for that. So that should be in your, on the Streamlit, not on the Python code. It, it's on the Streamlit. When you're making your, your, your design, the Streamlit, that is when you place the things like the logo, um, the emojis, whatever you want to uh, place in that stream so that it is um, it is more presentable and it is attractive even as you uh, are making it for a presentation to your to your em em employ employer yeah does that okay. answer your question Tadesa? yes thank you listener uh, could i add one yes uh, here uh, are we going to use some database concepts in order to insert the data that we have cleaned out from the telecom week one challenge data and then we will insert to database in on my screen or just we will present our cleaned excel uh, clean cleaned data which is saved on csv mm -hmm. on directly on sharing it or we or we design uh, the skill. Hello? Um, yes. Um, so so in, in, in this, in this um, project that you've been given or in this task uh, for this week, um, you were not asked about uh, if you are supposed to create some uh, database or pipeline, but you are just dealing with the CSV data. So um, if it's not asked in this one, just use the CSV data. But if you can go ahead and maybe create some uh, MySQL code for a pipeline, it's still fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Desmond and uh, Anastasia. Thanks, welcome. So can you hear me, guys? Anyone? Yes, I can hear you. 
Okay, so I'm sorry for that. I lost uh, my connection to power. Even my Wi-Fi is not yet back. I'll just I'll reconnect my machine a little bit later. So, yeah, I hope to do so you've been answered. I was going to answer your question, but uh, most of the most of the files you'll be displaying, the user engagement analysis, they have, they have evolved, you've already prepared them and they'll be in CSV. So you'll just be attaching them as CSV, but as uh, Desmond has mentioned, we already taught you how to actually connect with uh, your MySQL. So you can also try that approach. But uh, if you do connect to your local MySQL, it might uh, give you some issues when doing the, the deployment. Something else, I think I had also seen a question from Michael. Uh, it's not here anymore on multi, on doing stream leads for multi app. So I, for this, the, the one I just showed you, the one I just showed you was using multi, it was using more than one, um, it was multi apps, my, a number of applications had actually been joined to form that one application and I can I'll just show you in a few how that uh, was achieved. Okay, so internet is quite bad for my end. Actually, uh, this month, do you have this presentation? I think I'd shared it with you. You can just uh, share it from your end because uh, my machine does not have uh, internet connection at the moment. I have lost internet connection. This month, do you have it so that you just continue the presentation? Where did you share it? That I can get it. Your email. It's on your email. Just look at your drive. Okay. Actually, this month I think I'm back. I think my internet is back. I can just, uh, I can just continue. You want to share? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so I think uh, we'll just continue. Okay, so as I was saying, after now knowing what we, how we are going to approach our dashboard design next, uh, what you go is uh, actually developing the streaming application. So you just build the streaming application that display the um, and prompt the user to fill data. So uh, before my um, I've, I'm 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 opening the back end. You know, I think I can open it Notepad before the other works. Do 
Okay, so most of uh, our Streamlit applications, they are just uh, .py files. So you will notice that each and every page that I included in my in my Streamlit application, they are just app.py files. They are py files, and this is where we have all of them. So for example, we had the user overview analysis. I can just, before my Anaconda opens, I can just open this with a notepad. And I uh, notice it has it basically has the same structure we used in week zero. You just import Streamlit, you import a uh, few libraries that you will need, and uh, you now define your application. So you notice I load my data, which is a pickle file. This is why I said we don't need uh, the MySQL this week, as in week zero. So you just load the data that this page will be using. Then you go ahead and do your design. You set the title. You set uh, maybe the data frame that you will be using, you, you add it there. So this is just basically design and uh, all of it is just a simple streamlet, like streamlet.subheader, streamlets. And uh, if you notice, it was just basically showing the name, like we had just the top 10 handset users by customers, then displaying the data. We had maybe the top five handsets made by, then you just display the data. So that is basically, we had just like one page for, this was the user overview analysis. So when you go to user, maybe engagement, experience analysis page, you see that it follows the exact, it's just another streamlit, uh, Streamlit page and another same Streamlit application. So we just have the same format. You import Streamlit, you import the data, then you just display. So most of those pages are just like that. Then finally, we have the model implementation page, which was now also. Oh, what about that? I was opening with a, with a notepad. So you notice that uh, in. Um, the mod the the model one the one that we were doing that the, the the prediction it's a little bit different you will actually load the model first which, which is that it is now we did it we actually pickled it using job lib job yeah job lib then now you set the title set the whatever the design that you need and then uh, in the end from the input you get from the user this is where you pass your input to your model, model.predict, and then you output the, then you do the output. So after we have this, are just different pages. You notice that they are all just functions. So in the end, this where now we actually join all, uh, all our functions into one, into one. This is done in, we have this, we have another file here called multi app. And um, so, what multi app does is just uh, take all those pages and then combine them into one. It's just a simple code to combine all our apps. Then, finally, we run. We have the one that runs. This this is now basically form like a pipeline. This is a good example of using pipelines, just doing them in functions, in classes, and then finally we come and run them later. So here we have our set, no, 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 the app, app.py file. So like the, the one that I ran from my local host, as you saw, I was actually just running this, I was running this file, the app.py. And uh, in a, uh, just uh, importing Streamlit, and uh, we also get that multi app that we've just done, and also get all the pages as we need them. Then now uh, we combine them and uh, we just do them as one application. So that is now the, just this creating the Streamlit uh, page. So, whatever I think Tadesa was asking about the design you'll be doing them in the single pages. Like for example, the the question, the way I had added uh, a tool tip, I think that was in um, in model, model implementation. Okay. Like for example, you see here where I had added a tool tip, it's just basically a help, a help 
have a function, no, not function, just a help tool added to one of the Streamlit applications. So it's the designs, you do them in different pages, then you combine them later into one application. So that is basically how it will be using to do a streamlit. And then you notice here, so what I was actually concentrating on, apart from just displaying the, the tables and the graphs, is also the model. So when we load our model, when we load our model, you load our model here, just load the model into one of the pages, and then you pass the values. So passing the values, this is now from our, our users, and then we perform a prediction. A prediction is basically done as I have shown you down here. And finally, you just need to dockerize your, your work. I won't go in detail about this as well because this was also covered. Uh, last week the importance of uh, just why we're we doing dockerization is just to make your work uh, reproducible so that uh, when someone else wants to run your analysis in their machine they can just easily get your file and everything the setups everything is needed from your digital repository and just basically do it on their machine as well whether it is ubuntu windows different yeah so i want to go deep into the correlation this was done last week something else uh, that needs to be done is packaging and uh while we we're going through the week zero work i did notice that uh, from uh, most people not most of us actually packaged our work and this is also important and the uh, packaging work is uh, actually simple so after we've done everything you've uh, created your application you've after we finish everything you're doing this week uh, you can just uh, make your your work into a simple python python package so what this means is the way we do pip install pandas someone can just also take your system and say pip install xyz we are now xyz is the analysis that you do so a simple way of just making packaging your um, packaging your your work is uh, to create this setup dot py script file, and uh, what the only thing it uses is this library called the setup tools library. So I'll just show you an example of how a setup dot py file looks like. Setup. Okay, so what just set up does it, it gets your readme file from your GitHub repository, it gets your requirement.txt file, and then it does basically just a setup. You host the other, what's the description of your repository, the maybe the requirements, you do now the installation requirements, the long description, which is now the readme. You just set this few parameter. This is just basically how a setup.py file looks like. And most of us actually missed out on this mark in week zero. It, it is just as simple as that. Uh, I will share with you this file because I've added a uh, few references on following maybe the setup, like the how to do setup.py and other things. I'll share this document so that you can go through the references uh, in detail. So, and then finally, something else you'd need to do is uh, to deploy your work. So like you have said, there's someone who was able to actually deploy in a uh, stream cloud. That was good. So I think the one that I've just shared here is how you'll be able to deploy your Streamlit app to the Heroku environment. So Heroku is actually, I think it's not, Heroku is free. Not that I think Heroku is free. You just need to create an account in uh, Heroku and then um, you need to make sure that your work in GitHub repository is actually reproducible by having these specific files, like maybe the requirements.txt, the setup shell file, maybe a proc file. A sample of this file, they're just simple one or two line pages. They are not many. I can, if you need help, you can actually share away on how to deploy 
to Heroku, but it's actually really simple as long as your code is actually reproducible. If your code is not reproducible and it has errors, deploying to Heroku will be really tough. So, and then uh, if you need more details on how to deploy to Heroku, you can just reach out. Uh, this was not a Heroku tutorial, but now after deploying it to Heroku, your dashboard will be live and anyone who has a link to your Heroku now application, web-based application, can actually interact with their systems. This helps you in some cases we have, um, you have maybe the investors are in different locations and they are not just going and uh, showing them in a room where you can just show your app from your local machine. So in such cases, you just share with them the link to your Heroku application and they can just go through your application. So that's how deployment helps. And I think uh, with that, we can, uh, we can see that we completed. Any questions from you guys? Do you think you are ready to do a nice design, a nice interactive design for your dashboards? Any question? And anyone who thinks maybe they are ready, maybe someone who thinks they're not ready, what makes you not ready? How can I help at the moment before we leave this call? Yes, Daisy? Um, uh, hi, Anastasia. Thank you so much for the session. I might have missed this. Uh, but then again, why are we not using SQL again this time? And how can we use Picture? Or you call it, you said you're loading our data into like a PQL file. Okay, so first, the PQL file is uh, like a compressed, it's more compressed and it saves more data than maybe when you just do a .csv. A PICO file is uh, much smaller and it's uh, easy for deployment. That's why we will mainly use pickles instead of now the raw data. Especially now a pickle or like a parquet file, it is um, it is hard it is hard to understand as humans, which is what .csv and .json um, are easy. But now a pickle file or a parquet file is not maybe for human consumption, but for your system and for deployment. It's easier. Another question you've asked about my SQL, my SQL. So, okay. So the my SQL this week, most of our data is not as large. Like you'd notice, what we are just trying to to communicate is the top ten, the top five, the top tiers communicating a lot of data. This data that can just be stored in simple CSV and then. Uh, used in the apps. So I think, I actually think we can do the my, we can do the MySQL. I'm not sure if it will affect the deployment, but I actually think uh, you can also use MySQL. It is not required in this week, but since we've already covered it, I think you can also use it. I, I may, I will maybe confirm later on how we can actually connect our MySQL to, to the Heroku app. But uh, it is not required this week, but uh, if you can use it, then go ahead and use it easy. Is that okay? Yeah, I think that's okay. So um, even with like a pickle file, I can still get real-time feedback. So like much as your dashboard is only showing the top three, can I still see the top 10 in that case? In this case, since our data was not uh, interactive of saying, uh, you can actually make your dashboard more interactive. And uh, you, whatever my my app was doing, it was just displaying tables. It was just display, displaying tables that have already been, uh, there that already data frames. It is just displaying tables. But in your case, the way my model is interactive and they get input from the user, you can also make your, maybe like the overview analysis more interactive in a way that now they can choose maybe top 10, maybe top 5, maybe you can make it more interactive. Mine is, on that section, mine is a little bit not interactive, but you can make yours more interactive. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm feeling a bit flustered because you have talked about like so many things. Um, so if we the design of the dashboard, 
um after that point i feel like i started losing you at some point so maybe you could just give like a brief summary of what is expected okay so the main aim of this class was to show you on the design that was actually it's actually nice that you actually got the design because what you wanted to tackle in this class is uh, how do we make our design more interactable and uh, to actually deliver what you want to the user. That was the main uh, purpose of this class. What I went through after that was just showing you an example of a streamlit app that I had and uh, maybe how I have combined my pages to make one streamlit app, how it has been deployed. So after that, what I just did was just an overview of uh, just everything, but the main uh, reason for this session was understanding the design how to communicate to the user okay that part is clear do we get a session to walk us through like the rest of what you've done or we are on our own so what 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 would what would you want to be walked through because i did a, both streamlit and docker were have or had already been tackled so i don't know which one specific would you want to be walked through maybe we can arrange for that Okay, sure. Like how to work with multiple pages like you have done and then calling it all in one application. Yeah, it looks like quite a, quite a lot for me, but then I feel like maybe if it's something you get into, then it becomes much simpler. Okay, I can just, because uh, that is not, uh, it's not hard. I, I had gone through that for sure. I can just show you. So what... Uh, what what has been done here is uh in in week zero we did just one page of our streamlit application and uh, so what i've shown is now just creating those pages as a python script basically like where, where we had just one page what we were doing in week zero you create multiple a number of them so here for example we have the user overview analysis page we have the uh, we have the satisfaction analysis page, the engagement analysis page, and you'll just notice that each page is it follows the same format. So, for example, where, I, where do we have this one? The experience analysis. It follows the same format where you just import Streamlit, you import a few of the libraries you'd need, maybe pandas, maybe if you'll be using, uh, maybe if you'll be using um, plots, maybe you import matplotlib in your page. And then now this is just a simple definition. We are trying to actually use modular programming here. So you just uh, do maybe like a title, st.title, and then you display your data. You also, here we read the data first. Then you now you just display your data. If you're going to do maybe an input, so you just do a basic design of what you want that page to look like. You just do that separately in different pages. And then finally, where we had now, I had now the multi app. This is now which uh, the Python, no, the class that I used to combine all my pages. So again, you just import Streamlit. I think maybe I'll share this page. This this just this one page on how to combine. The rest you can just be creative and create uh, the single pages. But I think I'll just share this one. This is just simple on a. Uh, appending those files. We just have here like uh, you append those apps. You notice when I call when I call this multi-app function here, here when I say my app now is the multi-app, when I call the app here, what I do is I just add the pages one by one. I just give it the title and I add that page. So, and uh, this function is where it has been defined here like, um, when I call the app, I just give it a title. And now this function is now the page that I'm passing to this to this function. So then I just combine them. I just combine them and then now I run. I run my application. Maybe I'll share just this one for combining. I'll share this this uh, one page for combining and then the rest is just single pages and then finally we do another simple page also again for now running everything this is now the running application file the, the rest are just classes and functions is that better yeah that's much better thank you okay
Any other question, Daisy? Oh, you're, you're okay. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, sorry. Okay, so let me see. I think there was another question on the chat. A little clarification on the setup.py, how it works, and the connection to the requirement text. Okay, so Jizayam, I think that's how it's said. So in setup.py file, you'll just notice that I'm just uh, listing like the requirements that are needed to pip install my package. And one of the things that is, is required for the setup file is like the requirements.txt, maybe the readme, and uh, just a few a few others clarification, a few other clarifications like um what can I say which one? Like maybe just a description. This is now the requirement, the readme, just set up, maybe this this is just a version. You notice like we have uh, maybe it's, right now we have Python 3.10. You just name the version of your of your package and uh just a few just a few just just like um describing your work but the requirements.txt and the readme files this one actually set up outside this environment you notice that here i actually have to read the requirements.txt file because it is set somewhere else this is now where we just go in like a prompt yeah in a in a command prompt we just do pip i think it's pip free to get the requirements.txt file so the requirements.txt file just just uh, it's done outside. Then we actually read this file and incorporate it in our setup.py file. Is that clear? Design. Design. Yes. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can. Yes, we can hear you. And Jezahem, are you in the call? Are you still in the call? Jezahem. Oh, he's actually dropped and I was addressing his question. I think I'll just address it in Slack. I'll just address his question in Slack. I think he has already dropped from the call. So... Any other question? Any other question before we end this session? Any other question? So can I just assume that uh, we are all ready to make our dashboards interactive? And deploy. I think I, in week zero, I'll, uh, a few people, only a few people actually deployed their their dashboards, and I think this will actually be very helpful if you deploy it this week. So can I just uh, maybe pick a few, a few of you, and ask if uh, do you think you're ready to actually do a dashboard this week and uh, deploy it? Okay, let me go to. Um, Faith, Faith Bagira, are you, uh, will you do a dashboard this week, Faith? Yes, uh, I think I'll be able to. Okay, Rehmet, Rehmet, Yesha, Yesha, Nyo. Rehmet? Am I saying it well? Remit. Remit. She, she sent a text. Okay. Shaka, Shaka, Kevin. Do you think you've grasped enough to actually get a dashboard this week? Shaka, Kevin. Do we have people on the call or they're just online and not on the call? Shaka Kevin, just say something. Are you on the call? Mm. 
Okay, tisfai, tisfai, alema yehu. Yes, yes, I can. Okay, that's nice. I think uh, finally we will be pick one more person. Biruk. Yeah, I will. I will try. I guess. <laughs> okay, if you just have any blocker, you can just share on the Slack, and I think uh, we can help. We still have today, tomorrow, and Saturday, so that's a lot of time to actually go through the rest of the work and uh, create a nice dashboard. You can actually start today. You've already done task one. Try and create a page for task one and just see how it is. You, when you finish task two and you just feel like resting, create the page for task two. Just do it step by step so that when it's Saturday, you already at least have something for your dashboards. So is that okay with everyone? Yes. Okay, so if there are no more questions, I think we'll end here. I think I'll